What's up, friends? My name is Gus Peters, and I'm a technical arts director for a local church. Today, I'm coming at you with part two of a little mini-series describing how we connect our audio console to our personal mixing system on stage. If you haven't already watched part one, click the link up there. That'll explain how we physically interconnected the console and the personal mixing system, and it's kind of required viewing in order to understand what I'm talking about moving forward in the rest of this video. Let's look at the console. Going to our top layer here, we can see that we have our drums, our instruments, voices, and other key mics, some playback sources, and effects returns here. And it's all well and good, but this greatly exceeds our 16 channel count limitation of our personal mixing system. We're going to have to make some decisions about what audio we route and how we route it to fit it all into our personal mixers. We have two ways of doing that. The first is through direct outputs, and the second is through mix outputs. We'll use a combination of both to get most, if not all, of these channels down to our musicians on stage. First, let's talk about direct outputs. I'm going to select our bass channel here, which is channel 12. Our window here will change to reflect that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my arrow keys to go down to the direct out label. I'm going to select it, not its on button, but it itself, and press enter. This is going to give us more information about the direct outputs of this bank of eight channels. The first things that we're going to see here are the channel numbers and their labels, so we can see channel 12, base. Next, we're going to see the direct out point. Here you can see it's set to pre-HPF, which stands for high pass filter. Pre-HPF allows us to bring the signal in, gain it up, and send it right back out with no processing. This is great for instruments because it gives the instrumentalist on stage the exact sound of what we're picking up with our microphones and what's coming out of their instrument. It's really easy for us both to work together and troubleshoot things if we're both hearing the same thing. Next is Pre-EQ. This allows the high pass filter to be engaged and processed on the signal going out without applying any of the EQ or dynamics processing on, from the channel. And finally, our last option is pre-fader. This applies all of the processing that we're doing to the channel. High pass, EQ, dynamics, which can be compression or gating, all of it gets applied to the signal and gets sent out down the line. Next, we have the on-off button. Now, I can't stress the importance of this on-off button. Many times I've had to come in and troubleshoot because an audio engineer has failed to engage their direct output or failed to disengage the direct output. Turn your direct outs on if you want them on. Next, we see here is the soft patch point. You can see here that it starts with slot 2, which is where our card is installed in slot 2, which you saw in the first video, and then dash 3. That tells us that it's coming out of channel 3 from slot 2 here. So if I went on stage and saw my bass guitar here, I would expect to see the signal from the bass guitar showing up on channel 3 on the personal mixer. Last, we have an attenuation knob. This gives us just a little bit more fine control of the signal coming out of our console, where you can gain it up or down depending on the needs of the artists. So let's look at our direct outs. Channels 12 through 16, as you can see here, are all set to pre-high pass. This is great for instruments. Again, we want our artists to hear what the mic is picking up so we can fix things at the source. In the next bank of eight, we have our keys, which are patched pre-high pass, and then our sung vocals. Our sung vocals are patched pre-fader. The reason we patch them pre-fader or post-processing is because we want the vocalists to hear all of the good work that we're doing to their voice and help them be confident in delivering a great performance. They are hearing the best their voice can sound in their ears. So those of you who have been watching closely will have noticed that we've looked at channels 3 through 14 on the mixers, which leaves out four channels, two at the front and two at the back. Well, how can we get an overview of our entire output patching? Well, if we go to the Setup menu and press the button until we see the System Setup tab, we can see our output port setup. It's in banks of eight, so we're going to pull up slot two, one through eight, we'll look at the first two. Now everything you've seen so far has been patched sequentially, but you can see here that slot 2-1 and 2-2 are patched reverse sequentially with mix 6 preceding mix 5. Let's have a look at that. 
if I pull up mix 5 and 6 here, I can see that this is our drum mix. What I'm doing here is I'm taking the 8 channels of our drums and summing them down to 2 in a stereo mix. Now this stereo mix is also set up to follow the main pan of the master bus. Anytime I pan something to the left from audience perspective, like the floor tom, or pan something to the right for the audience perspective, like the hi-hat, it gets panned left and right in this mix. Now that's great and all, but it presents a problem when you're the drummer and your hi-hat is actually on your left and your floor tom is actually on your right. So that's why I reverse patched it earlier. Now when I pan something to the left in the house on this mix, it pans it to the right in the mix being sent to them. It's a very simple, easy workaround for that problem. Now let's see what else we have going on with our personal mixers. If we go to slot 2, 9 through 16, and we look at the last two channels, we can see that we have a direct out on channel 4 and a mix out on mix 9. So let's look at channel 34. We're going to go to our second layer, layer 33 through 64, and we're going to look at channel 2, which is channel 34. Looking at channel 34, we can see that that is our click track. We're sending that direct out, and we are sending that pre-fader. The reason we're sending out pre-fader or post-processing is because I'm doing a little bit of an EQ shape on that, so that way it punches through the mix a little bit better for some of our drummers. The last thing that we're sending to our personal mixer is mix 9. That is our foldback mix. This is kind of a catch-all bin for any other sources that we might have that I haven't already mentioned that we still need to send up to the musicians. Whether it's the pastor who's speaking, video playback, audience mics, all these things can get routed down there. They're all, for the most part, pre-fader, except for some of our playback sources, which are post-fader. So it's a mixture of those two things based on the use case. Like I said, it's a catch-all. Throw in the full back whatever you need, it'll get up to the musicians one way or another. Those are the decisions we made in routing our audio. What do you think? Did I do a good job with that? Is it efficient? Did you learn something from this? I'd love to hear more. Please leave a comment below and let me know what you think of how we're setting up our personal mixing system. Are you a musician? What do you think? Also, please give us a like or a dislike if you didn't like it, but please, if you leave a dislike, let me know why. I want to improve. I want to make these better. And finally, hit that subscribe button because I think I'm going to come out with more of these. I like this. I like teaching and I like seeing others learn. So if there's something you want to learn about, something about our setup that you want to see, please leave a comment below and I'd be happy to address it. Well, thank you so much, folks, and I hope that you learned something.